The last place I wanted to be was Frost Nippistan. This one's wife. You're a con artist. The pressure continues to mount for this one's wife. Just recently, her attempts at launching American Riviera Orchard, a website where you can't buy anything and you can stare at a bland beige landing page and debate whether you really want to provide your email address to it, failed to set the world alight. Indeed, it resulted in many criticisms from deriding the wholesale nature of what's being sold, as if it were some kind of Walmart, to the lack of originality, demonstrating the instances where it appears that she has taken inspiration from Flamingo Estate and from Martha Stewart. She has suffered in terms of the significant wounding that has arisen because of the attention that has been given to the Princess of Wales. As a consequence of the cancer diagnosis, there has been an outpouring of support for the Princess of Wales. Furthermore, her treatment with regard to certain sections of the media, certain celebrities, and, of course, the deranged sugary Sussex squad, has resulted in affirming of support for the Princess of Wales, something that this one's wife simply does not enjoy. Wounded by all of the attention being on her sister-in-law, she has attempted to claw that back by piggybacking the issues of the Photoshop picture by suggesting that she would never be involved in such behaviour because, after all, she has a freakish eye for detail. This, of course, was laughingly hypocritical, which resulted in a slew of examples being provided to demonstrate how she has suspected suspiciously engaged in behaviour which would cause suspected photoshopping of pictures, and in some instances, even where there's been an accepted manipulation of the same that has been admitted by a certain photographer, who then later attempted to backpedal from that position. Things, as often is the case, have not been going well for this one's wife, but they've certainly taken a turn for worse, with regard to her attempts to stir the pot in relation to her sister-in-law, with the half-assed supposed West best wishes that were sent, which of course was identified by many people as being completely transparent and also hypocritical given the behaviours that she has engaged in. More and more people have begun to criticise her. Tired of the same antics, fed up of the victimhood, bored of the same stories being trotted out able to see how she can only now obtain some form of public prominence by purchasing awards or paying for a place on a panel, her tired story must surely be running out of steam. There are certainly plenty of people who are willing to hurry that process up, and one of them is Tim Dillon. If you're not familiar with who Tim Dillon is, he's a comedian, and he was reported on, just recently, in The Spectator magazine in an article by Damien Riley. Tim Dillon is a comedian who not so long ago worked as a New York tour bus guide and subprime mortgage salesman. He started a podcast from his porch in 2016 and used it to talk about world events, what he and his low-life friends were up to, and frequently to complain about how broke he was. Today, each episode of The Tim Dillon Show is downloaded more than a million times, and subscriptions generate income in excess of $175,000 a month. In early April, he will perform at the Royal Albert Hall. He's also considering a run for Governor of California. Dillon's gift is for articulating the increasing madness of the modern world, often from the perspective of the little guy being screwed by corporate overlords, and making it seem not only terrifying, but also very funny. He finds plausible sounding conspiracy in almost everything, and at every opportunity rails against elites, usually making pleasingly specific allegations. He styles himself as a tour guide to the end of the world, but regular listeners to his podcast understand his true sympathies lie with the men and women on the factory floor and in the office cubicle people doing whatever it takes to get by. The comedy is dark, but almost always it is underpinned by genuine warmth. He's also a fan of people he deems to be rogues. This one's wife, for instance. Dylan stated, I like her now. I fully like her. 
As soon as she launched her lifestyle brand, I liked her because it all became apparent and obvious. And it became very funny. I would have lunch with her. I think she's a great con artist, and I respect the great con artists. She's one of the greats, one of the great con artists of our time. To leave a country because you're concerned about racism and because everyone's being racist and it's not fair and there's privilege, and then to come and live in the wealthiest town in another country, which is Montecito, Santa Barbara, to live in that town and then to launch a lifestyle brand called America, American Riviera Orchard, is truly one of the funniest things I have ever seen. It is absolutely hilarious. It's a level of shamelessness to be commended. This one's wife is a Hollywood actress. If you think the royal family is cold, if you think the royal family is calculating, you've never met a Hollywood actress. Accordingly, he says that he likes her, but he likes her because he admires her for being a shameless con artist. And he's another individual, one of increasing prominence himself, who has picked up on the behaviours of the Duchess of Delusion. And whilst it might seem that he is being approving of her, he, of course, is giving her a backhanded compliment by pointing out that she is a con artist, that she's a hypocrite, that she's a contrarian, that she has complained about certain behaviours and then sets herself up in a way whereby she seeks privilege herself. He is simply articulating that which millions of people identified a long time ago, that she is a con artist, that she has no ability, no talent, no charisma, that she doesn't actually care about anybody. Her compassion is false, and all she has done is con those that support her into believing that she does care. She would not piss on them if they were on fire. She can't stand them. They are just a means to enable her to control, to triangulate those supporters with those who are against her, an opportunity to draw fuel, an opportunity to gain greater prominence, to leverage for the purposes of money by way of a residual benefit. And yet again, this one's wife has been called out, this time by a comedian, demonstrating very clearly and very squarely that she is a con artist. Not just a con artist, but one of the great con artists of our time. He sees the shamelessness, which of course is part of her narcissism, that she does what she does without any recognition that it's shameful behaviour, because her narcissism doesn't allow her to see it. And once again, another criticism of her, labelling her a con artist. It really isn't going well for this one's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.